G'day and welcome to the next episode of Tech Adept Crafts. I'm Anthony and today we are looking at the August Patreon from TAC. This piece, designed by Ian Lovecraft, is absolutely beautiful. I, I, I say that every month, but really, it hasn't been wrong yet. Uh, this piece is based on a lot of the ruins that you will find in Cambodia. Uh, and I do have some photos at the very end of the video that, that were the inspiration for this. The, the amount of detail, every time you, you look, you find something different. To, to look at within it. The, the, the stone lines, the lines of the of the root system, the columns, the everything. Everything. It is a beautiful model and I absolutely, absolutely loved painting this one. But not only that, to test out painting something a little bit different for this one, I actually print uh, printed up two other pieces now. No, these are not based on the Cambodian ruins, but I thought that they would actually work well. These are actually based on uh, more Peruvian or uh, the Incas. These come from Ian's Mesoamerican um, bundle, and you'll see these in the next video, which is all about jungle trees. I uh, would love to see you come and join us over on Patreon so that you could get the opportunity to download this and print this for yourself. So come and find us at patreon.com slash techadeptcrafts. We'd love to see you there supporting the channel and helping us to bring more of these videos to you as, as frequently as possible. Make sure that you hit that like, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down the bottom as to what other projects you would like to see me tackle in the future. Sit back and enjoy Facing Giants. I've primed this with three colors. First of all, black all over, then a xenophil highlighting, white and then bone. I'm doing a light gray wash, essentially. Um, I've taken a, a light gray paint and I've really watered it down to go over the whole miniature. And this will help to let some of those um, colors from the Xenophil highlighting show through, as you can see here. First of the colors, I'm using a deep violet for the shading. Rather than doing uh, just a straight black or using a blue for the, for the shadowing, I'm using a purple here. Uh, my two main colors I am using in this are purple and green. I just think they will give a really interesting effect. This is going into a lot of the recesses to give the impression of shadows. Any of those deep crevices as well. Now to take a leaf out of the Impressionists playbook. This is a cadmium yellow deep hue and I'm using this to give the impression of light hitting the surfaces of the model all over the place. So this is sunshine showing through the model. To give a mossy look to the overall feel, I'm using Hooker's Green Hue Permanent from the Liquitex Acrylic Color Basics range. Any sort of deep green would work here though. I'm applying all of these colors fairly liberally and like into the cracks or on crevices uh, where you might find moss sitting or hanging. This is only our initial step for adding color. We're gonna go over this all later. All of these colors though have been heavily watered down so that they are going on a bit more like a wash than actually painting. Now to start work on our tonal hues for the stone, we're using a raw sienna again from the Liquitex range. This is again watered down and splotched over in random patterns just to show different forms of rock, different types of colors within the, the, the sediment showing through. This next color I'm using mainly around the base of the model and it is a burnt umber from Reeves. Any sort of burnt umber would do that. This gives us our second tonal hue for the stone, just showing different layers of that sediment. Here's a look at the model with all of the base coloring now done. Time to start blending them together. First thing for that, we're gonna do a white dry brush. This goes over the entire model. 
it helps to draw all of the, the colors together by blending over the top of them. It helps to mute the harsh edges where you may have left some of the, the paint not quite blended through onto that initial gray. You can see here I'm, I'm showing a slower technique there of the brushing just so you can see how it goes over. Dry brushing is a fantastic technique and you, you get most of the paint off the brush and then I'm trying to maintain the brush going downwards in the stonework, I think the cut stonework, but the, the general stones of either side, that doesn't really matter. You can bring that up to as light as you would like. You can also obviously not use a white, you could do a different type of grey, you could use a bone, but here you can see the effect that that has had to blend those colours together. All of those colours showing through really do make a difference. Here is our black wash and there's a link at the top, this is going through to the better black wash from Jeremy over at um, Black Magic Craft. And I'm putting this over a lot of the recesses, a lot of the, the cracks again. And again, it helps to tie those different elements together. Just like the dry brush, you can be as heavy handed or as light as you would like with this. I like to try and build it up in layers, water it down, and you can add again and again and again until you get as dark as you would like. Putting this into the crevices, the, crease, uh, the creases, all of those little cracks where you might be seeing shadow or a buildup of grime. This is your first wash. We will be going over again in a moment with a brown just to give it another tone. And here's the brown. This also comes from the Better Black Wash. I won't put the link again. But this is only really going around the bottom three centimeters, two centimeters of the entire model. And this shows sort of a, a wash of uh, a wash of dirt and build up around the base of this piece. It's a great way to show different tonal colors here. I am putting it in some of the upper areas, but not a lot. Now going with a very fine brush, again with the brown, but going through all of the lines of the paving stones. I just thought this would be a good way of really picking out the detail in that. Returning to the burnt umber, it's now time to paint all of the roots that are scattered around the model. Sienna, we are doing an overbrush over all of those roots. An overbrush is similar to a dry brush, but you will actually have a lot more paint on the brush, but still you're not doing a full wet brushing. First time I'm using this Deco Art Americana Slate Grey and I'm using it as a dry brush over the top of the roots. This helps to then blend it back through to the rest of the model and tie the two elements together. Once this is dry, a black wash over the root system. And again, this helps to tie the two pieces together. Now we're going to stick some flock around the edges. This is my bag of flock that I have shown in previous videos and I'm just putting in little dots of it all over the place. Uh, just as, as moss or a buildup of a little lichen or grass. And I'm using a toothpick there to, to put it in and place it the same way I have done on other videos. I'm not trying to put a whole lot here. I'm really just looking for scatterings of that green moss. So that is the, the tutorial for Facing Giants, which has a very rich Cambodian feel to it. And I, I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you have learned something about how to color your models in a different way for stone or adding different color effects. 
this was this was a lot of fun and I, I really hope that you enjoyed it too so until next time make sure that you come and follow us over at uh, patreon so that we can bring you more videos that is at patreon.com slash tech adept crafts and we'd love to see you there as the newest member of the hobby goodness or to come and join the tacklers um, or maybe just toss a coin for the bard. We'll see you in the next episode, which is all about making uh, jungle trees and a whole themed board there of various different ruins and temples and, and what have you. But uh, you're gonna have to wait and see that one for maybe, maybe next week, maybe the week after. Stay tuned, click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss that episode on jungle trees. And we'll see you in the next episode. Until then, keep hobbying. Cheers. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, but in particular, The Full Tackle, Ancient Rabbit, Andreas Rocco, Charles Faduke, David Bennett, David Skiberis, Wayne C. Israelson, Gene McGuire, Joel Cunningham, Judy Hayes, Kevin Goodrich, Christina B., Lopiana, Michael Togwell, Night Lurker, Riri, Sean Rickmeyer, and Talazanch.